everyone and welcome to another video by BioTeach, this time focusing on question 5. This is the final question that you'll be answering in the written portion for Unit 7 on the BTEC Applied Science. I have already created videos for questions 1 to 4 and you can find the links to these videos in the description of this video. Please make sure you watch those before you come to this one as it will probably make a bit more sense. For question 5, you'll be asked to write an article or a report which is aimed at a specific audience. The target audience for your report or article can fall into one of four categories. You could be asked to write something aimed at the general public, the scientific community, pressure groups or political representatives. The question itself is worth 15 marks, which is the highest scored question and it's the only one that's not worded the same every year. Where we know exactly what questions 1 to 4 will be asking word for word, question 5 always asks you to talk about advantages, disadvantages, benefits or limitations about the scientific issues discussed in your articles. In previous years, we have had advantages and disadvantages of using genetically modified crops, benefits and limitations of using honey to treat leg ulcers, and even the pros and cons of banning diesel fuel. The main pattern here is that you'll be asked to write an article or report discussing pros and cons, advantages, disadvantages, benefits or limitations around the topic area. So you can plan for this somewhat, but it won't be until you get into the exam that you'll be able to really know what to put in your essay to make the writing relevant. Examiners are looking for a report or article which has summarised and synthesised the main points and evidence in the articles. You should have conflicting and supporting statements mentioned, so a balance in your argument, and you would also get marks for the use of tone, style and scientific terminology. So what I wanted to do for this video is to break down each of the target audiences to help you understand how to write something aimed at each of those. So first, let's talk about the general public. At least one of the three scientific areas will be of interest to the public, mainly because it will affect their lives in some way. From my experience, it's usually Article 1 that's aimed at the general public, as it's been taken from a newspaper extract or an article that the general public would have access to. You have to assume that this group of people has little or no knowledge in a given area of science, you should consider that the information that you give them should be easily accessible and should include the background of the science involved. Things like examples and analogies are quite helpful to explain certain ideas or concepts and you should avoid really technical or complex words but you, you should use them where they're necessary so you have to judge when it's right or wrong to do so. Diagrams and figures should be included because they show good trends and if you've got any sort of expert testimony or anything that increases the level of interest or adds credibility, you should include that information as well. On the video here, I've talked about attention grabbing headings. If you're writing an article towards the target audience, you might want to have a heading that grabs their attention. You will want to present the pros and cons in a simple and easy to understand way. And you should have a coherent, logical, structured essay. With the scientific community, the information will contain technical terms, more detail and background because the readers of this particular report or article that you're writing are assumed to have good knowledge of the concepts of the science that's involved. When reports are presented to the scientific community, you need to ensure that your report stands up to structural, language and intellectual scrutiny. For example, the report style should have a title and sections, maybe subheadings, and also a conclusion to summarise and conclude what the findings were. The report should show clarity in your arguments and your argument should be balanced as well. You should avoid using slang or colloquialism terms and you should include evidence from scientific studies where possible. Normally, your evidence from scientific studies will come from Article 3 in your pack. The other target audience could be pressure groups. These are organisations which are funded publicly and privately to attempt to influence the public and politicians in the hope of affecting decisions made by the government on lots of different types of issues. They're generally independent of the political system and can freely voice their opinions on issues which affect the population. And so they tend to be seen as facilitators. Their job is to draw attention to points of concern. And if you're writing to a pressure group, you should include some technical information and explanations. 
The job of the pressure group is to balance the need to communicate key scientific information and use a level of language which allows the public or, say, for example, political representatives to understand the implications and the detail of that information. One thing that I do say to my students is you've got to make sure that you include advantages to the economy or social improvement factors to the pressure group. And you could probably include things like environmental health. Perhaps if you're talking about the cons of banning diesel fuels, you may want to talk about the negative aspects of not banning them on the environment, for example. Examples of pressure groups are groups such as the WWF, the World Wildlife Fund, and also Greenpeace. The last target audience is the political representatives. Science, engineering, technology and research are covered by most governments by a specialist department. And in the UK, the Government of Office for Science, or the Geo Science Group, covers this. In order for MPs to represent interests in science, they need a good understanding of the science itself or access to departments which can offer high quality, detailed scientific information and advice. Now, when your target audience is political representatives, I think it's a really good idea to look at the aspects of economic advantage and disadvantage. You also might even want to look at the social improvement that you could create by what the question is asking you to write about. And one thing that's quite key for political representatives is things like creation of jobs, as that can improve the social standing of that area. One of the aspects that you may have to consider is if you're talking about a project which requires international cooperation, then that could be of benefit to the country or the parliament or the political representatives that you're targeting your writing towards. And the other thing is thinking about environmental and defence creations as well, particularly for things like nanotechnology, something like that came up and that was quite a good point to be making. And then the last point I've put down is national prestige. This basically means that if our government is seen to be getting involved in something that's quite scientific, innovative and new, then that might bring them national prestige. I guess we might be considered as trailblazers in a certain area or advancement of science. So that's quite a good point to kind of write down. The last point I want to discuss is looking for tips for the exam. Now, the key thing is that this particular question is worth 15 marks, so you've got to make sure you leave enough time for this question. I'm going to create another video looking at how you should be spending your time in the exam, but I would say roughly spend around 45 minutes to write an essay, and that includes some of your planning time as well. As I mentioned earlier, you can plan a little bit for this in your six hours in terms of making lists of pros and cons and so on, but some of those pros and cons may not be relevant until you see the actual question, you won't be able to plan properly. So it's really important you allow yourself at least 45 minutes to do so. That includes your writing as well, of course. You've got to ensure that you show awareness of your audience. Writing really, really technical things for the general public will lose you marks because you're not showing awareness of who the general public are and that they won't really be interested in a lot of technical information. And so that then brings me on to the last tip is looking at writing with an appropriate tone, authority and terminology. Political representatives will need a certain amount of presentation, as will the scientific community. So you've got to really think about who you're writing to and what level of tone, authority and terminology is appropriate for them. I've had a couple of questions who've been asking me on how to structure essays. So I'm going to look at seeing how I can do that in a video form, perhaps for questions one, three and five. Um, but if there's any other questions that you've got for me, please feel free to leave me a comment underneath this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you share this video with anyone else who might find it useful and good luck for your examination preparation. Bye for now.